going to begin uh, Perek Yud of Shoftim. If you remember, uh, we just finished a unit that discussed the very uh, big Russia, the evil person Avimelech, who was the son of Gidon, and Avimelech had killed 69 of his uh, brethren, uh, the other children of Gidon, and eventually Avimelech himself was killed, along with the people of Shechem, the Jewish people of Shechem, who had supported him uh, in his evil reign. Uh, and uh, afterwards we continue uh, to get some machlokas. When you make a list of shoftim, uh, some uh, meforshim do not count Avimelech as a shofet because he was such a rasha, he's kind of a usurper or a dictator, but he wouldn't have the status of a shofet. But after Avimelech uh, died, he was killed by a woman uh, who threw a millstone off a tower that crushed his skull. Uh, Vayokam achrei Avimelech Loshias Yisrael, and after Avimelech there arose a Shofet who was the protector of Am Yisrael, Tola ben Pua ben Dodo Ish Yisachar. He was of the tribe of Yisachar, for who Yoshev b'Shamir b'Har Ephraim, and he dwelt in the city of Shamir, which was located in the mountainous area of Shevet Ephraim. The obvious kasha would be that if he is from the tribe of Issachar, why was his city in the area of Ephraim? But it could be, al peep shot, that uh, that was kind of the capital from which he conducted business, meaning he is from Issachar, but uh, Ephraim was more centrally located in the middle of the country, and therefore the capital, so to speak, uh, as while he was Shofet, was in the Shevet Ephraim. And we are told very little about him. Vayishpot es Yisrael eser b'shalay shana. He uh, judged Am Yisrael for 23 years. Vayamas vayikaver b'shamir. And he died and he was buried in the town of Shamir. Now, the this is a little bit of a kasha on my pshat, because if uh, Shamir was not really his town, it was simply his place of business, then the Chaira, they should have buried him back in the tribe of Yisachor. Why did they bury him in Shamir? That's a little bit of a tzorichian. Again, we are told virtually nothing about Tola. We are not told about the wars that he waged. We are not told about his accomplishments. But in the book of Shoftim, you need to know, you need to know a klal. The klal gadol is, uh, no news is good news. Meaning to say, when the Shofet lived in a tukufa of shalom and uh, ruchnius and spiritual uh, proper behavior, the Pasuk doesn't say anything. The book of Shaftim is primarily marich when there is failures, when there's oppression, when there is either spiritual yurida or physical persecution or both. So for many of the Shoftim, there's only one or two psukim. Uh, this is also true for the successor, although we know a little bit more about him. Vayokam acharav, and after uh, Tola ben Pua. Yo'ir HaGiladi, there was a Shofet Yo'ir from Gilad, Gilad is Aver Liyardain, from the tribe of either Ruvain or Gad, we're not told exactly, Vayishpot Es Yisrael Esrim Mushtayim Shana, so uh, if Tola was 23 years, Yo'ir is 22 years, and here we are given a curious uh, observation about his family, Vayihi Lo Shloshim Banim Banim, Rochvim al Shloshim al Yarim. And he had 30 sons who were men of distinction. And one of the signs of Chashivus is that you rode on a special type of Chamor, a special type of donkey. And they would ride on these 30 donkeys. And not only that, Ushloshim Arim Lahem. And each of his sons created or established a whole city, so there were 30 cities that they ruled over, and lahem yikra'u chavos yo'ir ad hayom asher bi'eretz ha'gilad. And those cities, because they were founded or established or conquered by the children of yo'ir, they became known as chavos yo'ir, the cities of yo'ir ad hayom until this very day, this is Shmuel Hanavi talking that he wrote uh, this book, Asher uh, Be'eretz HaGilad, and these cities are located in the land of Gilad, which is Aver Layardin. Uh, let me remind you that, in fact, there are other cities called Chavos Yo'ir that date all the way back 
to Moshe Rabbeinu's time, uh, after the conquest by Ruvain God and Chasi Shevet Menashe, and that was also Yoir, the son of Menashe, or the grandson of Menashe, uh, did not have uh, uh, established these various cities, and they were called Chagos Yoir. So it's a little bit of uh, a complication here that there were the Chavos Yoir of Yoir ben Menashe, which go all the way back to Moshe Rabbeinu's time. And then we have the Chavos Yoir of the children of the Shofet, who was called Yoir, which was much, much later. And both of those groups of cities had the same general appellation, Chavos Yoir. And then the Pesach says, Vayomas Yoir, and Yoir died, Vayikover Bikamon, and he was buried in Kamon. So we have these two shoftim for 23 and 22, a total of 45 years in which nothing happened, and as I said, no news is good news. Apparently there was shalom, and apparently the Jewish people were serving Hashem properly, and they had the good fortune, they had the hatzlacha of being a shofet during that tekufa. But then, as we often find, there was a descent, there was a yirida, the yaisifu, uh, B'nai Yisrael, Laso, Sarah, B'nai Hashem. The Jewish people continued to do bad in the eyes of God. They got overconfident. They got complacent. Uh, they worshipped the Canaanite gods, the Baal and the Ashtara. Again, this is the feminine god, Ishtar. So Baal is the male and Ishtar is the female. The Yes Elohei Aram and the gods of Syria, which were brought into Canaan. Yes Elohei Sidon the gods of Phoenicia, Elohei Moab, the gods of the Moabites, Elohei B'nai Ammon, the gods of the Ammonites, V'yes Elohei Polishtim, all sorts of Avay Dezaris. V'yazvu es Hashem, V'loy Avadua. And they had forsaken the Rebbeinu Shalalem, they had abandoned the Rebbeinu Shalalem, and they did not serve him properly. So as we always find, V'yicharaf Hashem B'Yisrael, Hashem was angry at Am Yisrael, but I want to point out that the name that it's used here is Yudke Vavke Rachamim. And the lesson here is that even when there is Charonaf, even when there is fury, even when there is anger, it comes out of Hashem's love for us. So we should do tshuva and become close to Him. And because of this Charonaf, a Yimkarem Biyad Polishtim, uh, B'nai Yisrael were delivered to the Philistines, Ubiad B'nai Amain and the Ammonites, the B'nai Ammon. Again, remember, Ammon and Mayav are brother nations coming from the two sons of Lot, right? The older daughter uh, had a son from Lot, her father, that was called Moab from my father. The younger daughter uh, had a son that she called Ammon from my people. And these became the nations of Ammon and Mayav. Vayir Atsu, and they oppressed Vayiratesu, and they broke Espinay Israel Vashanahi, starting from right after the death of Yair. Shemona Esrei Shana, 18 years of oppression, as Kolbene Israel, Asher Behaver Hayardain, Beret Samori, Asher Begilad. Now, this is interesting. Uh, this indicates that the oppression of Ammon and even the Plishtim did not cover all of Eretz Israel, but it primarily was on the east bank of the Yardain, near the area that had been occupied by the Amori, which of course the Jewish people conquered from Sichon Melech Amori in the days of Moshe Rabbeinu. Now, it then says that after the Ammonites kind of terrorized or dominated the east of the Jordan, the Yavru B'nei Ammon Yardin, they then crossed the Yardin going west, Lilachem, to wage war, Gam Yehuda U'Binyamin, against the tribe of Yehuda, the tribe of Binyamin, this is the area around Yerushalayim, and Beis Ephraim, north of that, even in Shevet Ephraim. So this was not a national conquest. You might call it a regional persecution. First, east of the Yardin, and then in Yehuda, Binyamin, and Ephraim, and the Jewish people in these areas, which were heavily populated, were greatly, greatly oppressed. Now, it's interesting, although it did mention that the Philistines were involved as well, but the Plishtim seemed to have dropped out, because we're going to see Mikanul Laba, that the primary enemy 
that we're going to be discussing are the B'nai Ammon. And, once again, uh, this familiar pattern, we leave Hashem, we suffer, we then call out to Hashem and do tshuva, and Hashem sends us a goel umoshia. Vayizaku b'nei Yisrael al Hashem leimar, and the Jewish people cried out to God, saying, Chotanu lach, we have sinned to you, v'chiyazavnu es aleheinu, we have forsaken our God, v'nabod es ba'olim, and we have worshipped the Baal, the Canaanite God, the Baal. Vayayimer Hashem el b'nei Yisrael in Hashem, again, the Midah of Rachamim, said to B'nai Yisrael, now this means through a Navi, even though it doesn't say uh, the Navi Beferish, Halo mi Mitzrayim and min Amori mi B'nai Amon and Eplishtim, Behold, I have saved you from so many enemies, from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the B'nai Amon and from the Pelishtim, with Sedonim and from the Phoenicians, the Amalek and from Amalek, who Ma'on, Ma'on is an otherwise unknown nation, but apparently another nation, Lachatsu Eschem. They have oppressed you over hundreds of years, but different times and different places. But Titzaku Eli, and when you pray to me and you call out to me with sincerity, Oshia etchem mi adom, I save you from their hands. Hashem is saying, I have a track record. If you turn to me, I'll help you. And yet, the Abishter says, inexplicably, Atem azavtem osi, but you abandon me, you keep on leaving me. Vatavdu Elohim achayim, and you worship other gods, small g, that have no power. Lochein, and Hashem says, if that's your attitude, that you reject me, then I'm not going to be helping you. You don't want my help. Lochein, lo osif lo I'm not going to continue to save you. Lechu, a little bit of a sarcasm here. Lechu v'zaku el Elohim asher b'chartem bam. Why don't you cry out to all of those gods that you chose that you think are better than me? Hema yeshia lachem b'eisaratchem. They will save you in your time of trouble. You want to worship those fake gods? Ask them to help you. So Hakadosh Baruch Hu is giving a teichacha here. Vayimru b'nei Yisrael el Hashem and b'nei Yisrael admit their failures to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Chatanu, we have sinned. We're not going to give any excuses. But I say atalanu kechol atov b'yenecha. You can do to us whatever you think is right, Hashem. We deserve it. Ach, but we beg you. Hatzilenu nakai ayimaza. Please save us. Give us another chance. Now, Hashem knows we go up and we go down. And unfortunately, even after we do tshuva, we sin again. But the Abishter has rachamim. And although if a person says deliberately, ech yashav, I'm gonna do tshuva with the intention of sinning again, that may not be a valid tshuva. But if your tshuva is sincere, and you really want to change, even if Hashem knows you're going to fail in the future, He will accept your tshuva. That is not called echte biyoshev. And B'nai Yisrael tried to change. V'yosiru es elohei bam. They removed the foreign gods from their midst. V'yavdu es Hashem. And they resumed the worship of HaKadosh Baruch and as a result, Vatiktsar Nafshay Biyamo Yisrael. This is a very difficult expression. Vatiktsar Nafshay. Hashem's nefesh, God's soul, was too small, Taviocha, to bear the pain of Am Yisrael. In other words, it's describing in a metaphorical term, this is a mashal, that God couldn't take it anymore. His Neshama, his nefesh, was too small to hold on to the suffering of Am Yisrael. He had to save them. And now uh, we move uh, to how this was done. At some point, the Bnei Amon wanted to wage war against Am Yisrael. They encamped in Gilad, Ever Liardain. 
Yeyosfu B'nai Yisrael V'yachnu B'mitzvah. And B'nai Yisrael gathered their forces in Mitzvah. Mitzvah was a tall, Mitzvah actually means a tower or a lookout point, and they were encamped in Mitzvah. But they didn't have a leader at this point. Vayimru ha'am sarei gilad ish el reyeyu. And the people who were the officers of Gilad, they said to each other, we have no one to lead us, no one to help us. Mi ha'ish asher yachel hilachem b'vnei amon. Who is the person who will be able to lead us in our battle against the Ammonites? Whoever that person is, yiel the reish b'chol yoshvei gilad. We will make him the reish, we will make him the head of all of the inhabitants of Gilad. Now again, interestingly enough, this is not uh, appointing somebody as a shofate for Qal Yisrael. This is starting east of the Yardin, and it's only the Anshe Gilad that are saying, whoever will be the one that will lead us into battle, we will make him the head of the Yoshve Gilad. We'll see later how this was extended on a national level. So this is the end of Perek Yud.